Hi, I'm John Slatter and you're very welcome along to Car File. Now, if you've been watching the programme since the beginning of the series, well then you know each week we take three cars from a different class and test them for practicality, performance, styling and value for money. And this week, well, we've decided to do something a little different. All three of our cars hold their value better than a Picasso and they're all from different parts of the market. First up then, we have the Rep's favourite, the BMW 3 Series Compact 320TD. Then we have the more unusual Honda HRV VTEC. And finally, we've got the fun filled little Mini Cooper. Plus, of course, Brendan Coogan, as always, will be here with his alternative car test. That's right, John. For this week's alternative, I've got something that would have been unheard of just a few years ago a Jaguar for less than 20 grand. And it holds on to its money. Now, before we get down to the nitty gritty of the testing, let's see what our three cars have to offer. BMW have always been hailed as the ultimate driving machine, but unfortunately the old compact didn't quite live up to the family reputation. Thankfully, however, BMW have addressed this, and now the compact is a very capable car. Under the bonnet is the company's highly impressive 2-litre common rail diesel engine. For those of you interested in statistics, how does 150 brake horsepower, not to 60 in 8.9 seconds, and an average of 51 miles per gallon sound? One statistic that isn't quite impressive, though, is the price. The Compact is the most expensive of our three cars, tipping the scales at just over £19,000. From Honda, we have the Chunky HRV. Now, it's hard to say who this car is really aimed at. At first glance, it looks like an off-roader, but with limited ground clearance and no low ratio gearbox. Anything more than a puddle is going to be a bit of a challenge, especially with an exhaust pipe that is so close to the ground. At the end of the day, this is a car for people who want the practicality of a hatchback but also the style of a Mini 4x4. Powering the HRV is a 1.6 litre VTEC engine, but don't go thinking you're going to be ready for the traffic light Grand Prix, as performance isn't anywhere as near as mind blowing as the other members of the VTEC family. And finally, we come to everyone's favourite the Mini. Up until the launch of the Cooper S, this was the must have for Mini enthusiasts everywhere. With classic Mini lines, great handling, and BMW levels of fitment, the Cooper is a real future classic car. And at just under £12,000, the Mini is not only the cheapest car here, but also a pretty realistic proposition for wannabe hippies everywhere. First, let's have a look at exterior styling. You know, there was a time where it seemed that every single person on the planet wanted to own a BMW 3 Series. And nowadays, correct me if I'm wrong, and I know what 3 Series owners are going to say about this, but it seems they're as common on the roads as traffic jams are in cities during rush hour. But one model you don't see that much of is this, the BMW 3 Series Compact. And for me, that's because of its styling. Now, my first gripe is with this, the big round headlamps. OK, so it distinguishes it from the rest of the 3 Series range, but they just don't seem to look right. Maybe it's just because I'm used to seeing the standard setup, but I don't understand why a BMW have decided to differentiate the Compact from the Saloon, the Coupe and even the Touring cars. For me, all it does is makes the Compact look like the poor relation. When you get around the side, well, things don't get much better. If you actually just stand back and have a look at it, it seems to be out of proportion. There's the nice flowing bonnet, the three series sculptured lines, and then you get around the back and you're faced with this. Now, being Irish, I'm not normally stuck for words. And to be honest with you, I'm not stuck for words here either. It's just the words I would like to use to describe this. Well, let's just say I like working for Carfile. I want to keep working for Carfile. So how do I put it politely? It's ugly. Yes, BMW will say that the compact has always been designed as part of the 3 Series range. I disagree. I think it was an afterbirth. Oh, Freudian slip. An afterthought. I can see it now. All the mechanics and engineers sitting around, shaking hands, patting each other on the back, saying, we've made another beautiful car, until someone pipes up and says, oh, we forgot the compact. And then bedlam ensues. Absolute bedlam, until someone else pipes up and says, I have the answer. Let's just cut the back end off. Problem solved. I really don't think so. You'll be hard pressed to find anyone who doesn't like the Mini. Even men who say it's a girl's car will secretly be wishing they had one. Thankfully, BMW have kept the styling cues of the original Mini, only now it's a bit more solid. And the really great news is that no matter what angle you look at it, it oozes style. To distinguish the Cooper from the standard Mini 1, there are a larger set of sporty alloys, a lower ride height, and a nice front splitter, all of which make the Cooper a car for today, just like the original in the 60s. 
In the past, Honda have built solid but rather boring cars. This, however, is something that cannot be leveled at the HRV. Launched in 1999, the HRV arrived at a time when people's love affair with small 4x4s was just taking off. And despite looking like a box on wheels, the HRV somehow manages to look funky and cool. The HRV has recently gone through a midlife facelift. Its cute image has now been slightly erased and been replaced with a more purposeful look. And unlike the BMW, the HRV's lights actually do look like as if they belong to the car. Now the model we have here is the five door. And although it isn't quite as stylish as the three door, it's a more practical proposition. Along with the two extra doors, this model is 100 millimeters longer, both in overall length and wheelbase, helping to provide extra rear legroom. To look at, there can only be one winner. And if you haven't guessed who that is yet, then you must be crazy. First place in the style stakes goes to the Mini Cooper. Basically, there isn't enough words to describe just how drop-dead gorgeous this car is. But trust me, you would need all of them to give it the praise it deserves. In second place is the Honda HRV. Although it has now been beefed up, if that's what you could call it, the HRV is still a pretty cool customer. And who would have thought a car company could make a square piece of metal look like this? Last in the style stakes has to go to the 3 Series Compact. I have to ask, how could a manufacturer with the reputation of BMW get it so wrong? No matter what angle you look at it, it just looks plain ugly, and that's been nice. Let's hope next time the designers are given the same amount of time on the compact that they were obviously given for the rest of the range. Looking good on the outside is one thing, but seeing as you're going to spend most of your life behind the wheel, not alone does it have to be practical, but it also has to be easy on the eye. Now I'm not going to beat around the bush here, why change the habit of a lifetime? But the interior of the HRV is boring. In fact, it's so boring it reminds me of things I wanted to say about the back of the BMW, but I won't. Mind you, if you do have a problem sleeping, well this will help it. While the exterior is creative and extremely stylish, the interior is the complete opposite. When you sit in, you're faced by a mass of black plastic and the token silver inserts do nothing to make it any more exciting. On the plus side, the dash is really well laid out, the dials are easy to see and the knobs are close to hand. And even after a million miles, you know everything is still going to work. Standard equipment wise, it doesn't do too well, although it does come with electric windows, air conditioning and ABS. Now, one of the benefits of driving a 4x4, apart from looking cool, is the high driving position. You can pretty much see everything that's going on around you and you feel quite safe. And although the driving position is extremely comfortable, you never feel 100% at home because the seat doesn't adjust that much. It's actually quite limited. And the steering only adjusts for height and not reach. Where the HRV is boring, the Mini is an absolute work of art. Apart from being one of the most creative and inspiring interiors I've seen, it is also one of the most easy to live with. Okay, so some of the switches can be a bit fiddly, but when they look as good as these, who really cares? The layout of the dash stays true to the car's heritage, with the dashboard mounted speedo and the rev counter atop the steering wheel. Some of it might take a bit of getting used to, but trust me, after a while you won't even notice this unusual setup. The standard safety equipment on the Mini is good, it comes with four airbags and anti-skid brakes. Where the HRV was boring and the Mini was funky, the 3 Series is best described as somber. Although it has even more black plastic than the HRV, it doesn't feel as intrusive. In fact, it feels right. Don't ask why, but you just couldn't imagine BMW designing anything other than this. Everything in the cabin works beautifully, whether it's the smooth moving air vents or the electric window switches. The driving position is slightly lower than in the saloon, but it still manages to support you in all the right places. It's no real surprise that the Mini once again comes out on top, whilst the 3 Series can match the Mini for quality and ergonomics. It can come close to the Cooper's style, and even though the HRV is pretty much bulletproof in terms of build quality and layout, the choice of plastics are uninspiring, meaning the HRV is left trailing. Up to now, our tests have been pretty straightforward, but this is where we start to sort the men from the boys. Now we're going to see which of our three cars offers the best level of practicality. Being the smallest here, the Mini was always going to find it difficult to be the most practical. But to be honest, when you're buying a Mini, you're buying it because it is a Mini, and not so that you can fit a lot of gear inside it. This is a nominal four-seater. There's enough room in the front for two six-foot people, but that means there's only enough room in the back for small children. And when I say small, I mean small. Mind you, if you do find you have to get into the back, well, I do recommend at least 15 minutes of limbering up time before you try it, because it is quite a struggle. Around the back, ignoring the roof, we have the boot. 
and it's tiny. You'd be lucky if you fitted two shopping bags in here. The good news though is, is that the back seats fold down like so. So you might be lucky enough to fit four shopping bags in. The new compact is a great improvement on the previous generation. There is of course plenty of room in the front, but where the old compact suffered was in the rear, the main area addressed by BMW. Unlike the Mini, access to the rear is good, and that's mainly thanks to this nifty slide and tilt arrangement on the front seats. Once in the back, however, although legroom isn't too bad, headroom is a little tight. You better just hope that the journey isn't too long. As for the boot, well, it's not too bad. Although things don't start off well, there is a high loading lip, and once inside, space is limited because of suspension intrusions. Straight away, the HRV has an advantage over the other two cars. It's got four doors. There's plenty of room in the front as the seats slide well back. The boot is also pretty impressive, and thanks to the squared off rear, it is also a good shape. This means should you ever have the need to move a set of drawers, the HRV would be the car for the job. Something that can't be said of the Mini. Although it looks quite big, the car's actual dimensions mean that it is only just bigger than a VW Lupo, so rear legroom is pretty much non-existent. Not surprisingly, the HRV is the clear winner here. Not only does it have two extra doors, more legroom and a decent sized boot, but it also feels very airy. Second place goes to the 3 Series. There's no doubt that the new Compact is an improvement on the previous generation. But up against the HRV, the Compact just can't compete. Well, so far it's been nip and tuck between our three cars, but make sure you join us later in the programme when we'll be announcing which one is going to be crowned the king of the cash holders. Right now, though, it's time to join Brendan Coogan for his alternative car. And this week, the lucky devil is taking a look at the Jaguar X-Type. Jaguar has long been established as a member of the Gentleman's Motoring Club with a pedigree to beat even the finest Germanic offerings. It's the informed choice for the businessman who likes some sporting heritage with his transport. However, they ain't cheap. At least they weren't until they made this car. All hail the new 2-litre V6 X-Type Jag. A proper Jag for the price of a couple of options packs on other prestige makes. Well, all right, that might be a bit of an exaggeration, but give your Jag dealership 20 grand and they'll give you a shiny X-Type with enough change left over for a pack of those snazzy string-back leather driving gloves. Bargain. But this cut-price baby Jag isn't just a substandard car with the Jaguar badge glued on. Sure, you lose the four-wheel drive system found on the higher spec 2.5 litre and 3 litre models, but what you do get is still quintessentially a Jaguar. Despite being a relatively smaller engine, the 2.0-litre V6 still purrs along nicely. Get it winding along a smooth A-road and it feels well planted and stable, and in the 2.5 or 3.0-litre models, the four-wheel drive system makes itself felt, providing plenty of grip in all conditions. It's maybe not as involving as a BMW 3 Series, but it's more relaxed at high speeds, and it certainly has the feel of the bigger Jags. The V6 is smoother than David Dickinson, you know, the oily one of Bargain Hunt, and will return a respectable 30 miles per gallon. Performance is in line with Jag's sporting pedigree. The 2.0-litre V6 will pull you to 60 in 10 seconds. The 2.5-litre takes two seconds off that time, and the 230 brake horsepower 3.0-litre V6 makes it in a little over six and a half seconds. A stumbling block for many, though, will be its high CO2 emissions ratings of between 219 and 240, making it an expensive option for company car users. The 2.5 litre and 3 litre models will be the choice of those who want extra performance and a more spirited driving experience, but the 2 litre will hold on to its value marginally better than the other models, although the whole range does well, retaining between 55 and 60% after three years. All models are very well equipped too, in addition to the seemingly ubiquitous six airbags, traction control and ABS, you also get a premium stereo, reverse parking control and automatic air conditioning. And on the list of extras that is available, there's a snazzy touchscreen satellite navigation system. Mm. So then, a gentleman's classic that makes sound sense as a new buy. It's quick, well refined and very well equipped. And it's not a BMW. Hurrah! Good man Brendan, of course. He will be back next week with another alternative car test. Well, that's it for part one of Carfile, but make sure you join me after the break when I'll be testing the BMW, the Honda and the Mini out in the road. See you in a minute.
Hi and welcome back to Carfile. This week we're doing something a little different. The three cars we are testing all hold at least 50% of the value. But where it gets really interesting is the fact that each car is completely different from the other. Now so far we've tested them for styling and practicality and now it's time for the bit that I really enjoy. Taking them out on the road and putting them through their paces. And what better car to start with than the fun filled Mini Cooper. This Mini is a world apart from the Mini my mum used to drive. And being sporty, it means it's a really firm ride. It is quite enjoyable to drive and you love throwing it around the road. And it'll give you an awful lot of confidence to drive it fast into corners and out of corners. One thing I have noticed though, and it can be quite annoying at times for some people, is there's a small bit of tire noise. Not much, but a small bit. And it's the type of thing that can really grit in your nerves. But overall, I have to say, the car is fun and exciting to drive. In terms of pure driving pleasure, there's no beating the Mini. It's the closest thing you're probably ever going to get to a road-going go-kart. But unfortunately, handling isn't everything. And the overall driving experience is let down by the engine. It just does not seem to be up to the job. So, from one BMW to another, let's see if the 3 Series Compact can live up to the BMW reputation. Out on the road, the first thing you notice is the noise, or should I say the lack of it. The diesel engine powering the compact is incredibly quiet. It's only when you're at the light that you can actually hear any kind of diesel rattle. And unlike diesels of the past, this common rail unit is great fun to use. I will say though that this two litre unit is better than its sister petrol engine. And if you don't believe me, just check out these figures. The diesel is quicker to 60, has more torque, and will give you an average of an extra 10 miles to the gallon. In terms of handling, the Compact is a great combination of composure and sportiness. Being rear-wheel drive, the car's balance is fantastic. In fact, it's so good that BMW actually used the settings from the Compact to hone the rest of the 3 Series range. Not only is the Compact a fun car, it is also a safe one. The car comes packed with a host of electronic driving aids. So should you be pushing the limit, you will be assured that the car is helping you to remain completely in control. Before you even set off in the HRV, you know that it is going to be at a disadvantage. Being set up like a 4x4 means the HRV is never going to be as composed as either of the other two cars. But having said that, it doesn't do a bad job of feeling like a decent small hatchback. The steering is pretty sharp, and I was surprised at how well it tackled the corners. Okay, so there was a bit of body roll, but nowhere near as much as the bigger 4x4s. And on the plus side, the HRV is also capable of some light off-road work, although I wouldn't want to see how far it could go. Like all VTEC engines, the one in the HRV is great fun to use. They are keen, energetic, and smooth all the way up to the red line. Performance isn't groundbreaking and it isn't helped by the five doors extra bug, but the car will hit 60 in just under 11 seconds and go on to a top speed of 122 miles per hour. But having driven the car, it seems quicker than the figures suggest, but I think that's down to the keenness of the engine. This is probably the toughest call yet. Here we have two cars, the Mini and the Compact both from a manufacturer that prides itself in building driver's cars. Both of them are great, but for me, the winner is the Compact. Although the Mini handles well and is a hoot to drive, it is let down by its rather lackluster engine. But the Mini lacks the mid-range, the power of the diesel engine and the Compact just keeps on pulling no matter what gear you are in. And combine that with alert steering and a balanced sporty ride, the Compact has to be the winner. Like I said at the beginning of the show, all our cars hold their value extremely well. So this next category is going to be incredibly difficult to judge. First up, we've got the BMW 3 Series Compact. And at just over £19,000, it's the most expensive of our three cars here today. And unfortunately, like most BMWs, the amount of standard kit is not good. You don't even get a CD player with this. And if I'm signing a cheque for £20,000, I do expect a few luxuries. Next up, we've got the Honda HRV at just under £15,000 and straight away it matches the compact with electric windows and air conditioning. But it gets bonus points because it's four wheel drive and you also get four doors. Last but not least, it's the fun filled Mini Cooper, which comes in at just over £11,000. And although it's small, it's well kitted out. You get ABS and four airbags. 
And if you want to make it that extra bit special, well, you can always add satellite navigation and leather seats. When it comes to value for money, it's a surprise that the car to pick is a BMW. OK, so it's a Mini, but still, it is from the same company that makes the compact. And for nearly £7,000 less, you get just as much quality, but also more for your money. Second place here goes to the HRV. With keen pricing and decent standard equipment, the HRV is definitely worth a look at if you're in the market for a good size, fun, and stylish alternative to a normal family runaround. Although the compact comes with a great reputation, its high price and lack of equipment means that in this company, the compact just can't compete. Well, that's all our tests completed, and what an interesting day it's been. Although all our cars are completely different, it's been very close. So before I give the game away, let's see how the score is added up. First place this week goes to the Mini Cooper. With great looks inside and out, nippy performance, and good pricing, you can see why the new Mini is so popular. And it's thanks to such high popularity that its residual value is so high. Second, and maybe a surprise to a few, is the Honda HRV. Matching style, practicality and keen pricing means that the HRV is an interesting alternative to the traditional family hatch. Last in our group is the 3 Series Compact. Although the car has a great engine, rock solid build quality and that great chassis, somehow it just doesn't match the other two cars. But look at it this way, if you're going to be beaten by anyone, it might as well be someone from the same family. Well, that's it for this week's car file, but make sure you join us next week when we'll be testing three cars that will suit first-time buyers. So if you're looking for your first car, make sure you don't miss it. We'll see you then.